Yo, yo. We live. What's up, world? It's your boy, Eric Stacks from My Rap Mentor. And for those who don't know me, I'm a rapper and rap coach. I specialize in branding, teaching you how to get your fan base up, and most importantly, get that bag. But today, we have another guest. Let them know your name. Let them know what you do. Introduce yourself. What's happening, y'all? It's your boy, J.O., coming out of Florida. Currently residing in Las Vegas right now. Uh, Double Up is the team, the record label, the brand. Uh, you know, we we doing everything we can musically. I'm an artist, producer, engineer. Uh, anything you need done with music, we try to get it done for you. So. Oh, so you do it all. You do it all. Yeah, man. One stop <laughs> shop, man, and it, and it keeps the keeps that bottom line fat. Okay, you know okay. Saying? How long you been doing music? Uh, I've been doing music since the age of like 11, man. Yeah, really. Same I, here. Yeah, so. <laughs> Since the age of 11, really just uh, fell in love with uh, DJing in the beginning. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? My mom dated the DJ, and I seen this turntable set up in the garage one morning. It was glowing like, oh. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and a heavily glow. Like, I was coming in there like, <laughs> what is this? You know what I'm saying? And he got super mad because I broke one of the needles. And that's like, bro, yeah, it's a cardinal break, sin. You can't be breaking the needles, yeah, bro. it's cardinal sin, you know what I mean? But that you was still paying for that sin today, probably. Yeah, <laughs> <for sure. laughs> So, uh, you say cool. you're from Florida, right? Yes, sir. How long you been out in Vegas? I've uh, been out in Vegas for about six, seven years. Six, man. seven years? You like it out here? Yeah, I do, man. Yeah, Vegas yeah. Is, a, is a different vibe. You know, I, I spent a lot of time in New York City uh, in my career as an engineer. Uh-huh. Uh, and that was a lot of fun. Uh, kind of, Vegas is like uh, if New York, like, mashed up with Miami. Yeah, yeah, you know yeah. Saying? I've been to Miami couple times. I, I love it out there. That was one of my favorite. Who doesn't? Before I moved out here, I went there and Vegas. This was my two favorite places, but Vegas yeah. one because it was cheaper. So yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> it was, it was hey, cheaper. It I'm, I'm close to LA, so yeah, you know. Right, right. But um, so you say you've been rapping for a while. Obviously, yeah. how long you been rapping? Probably uh, man, since eleven. That's see. a long time. Yeah. So I really started writing when I was like, uh, I started doing poetry a lot when I was younger. Probably like sixth grade. And then from there, it just naturally evolved into uh, into the rap thing. And I always had the interest in it and, uh, you know, just creating stuff. Anything uh-huh. creativity-wise, like, I was always involved with it. Um, and then, yeah, just started really writing and, and honing my craft since about that time. And then, uh, you know, started, it was in a couple of rap groups, just some talent mm-hmm. shows. Like, you know, just the typical, yeah, you know, like, the, round the, the first way, start. Like, yeah, <laughs> like, you know, the, the, the look at me type stuff, uh-huh. you know what I'm saying? And then... Uh, from there, I started to take a back seat and really started to go like to the engineer route. That's what I was just about to ask you because I, I kind of want to get into that too. So yeah. mentor me on that. <laughs> How long, what made you want to get into that route? Um, honestly, I needed a foot in the door uh-huh. in the industry, right? Like everybody's biggest thing is like, how do I get in? Uh-huh. Like, well, who can I talk to? I can't just run up to people at sandwich shops, like yeah, you know, like, <laughs> hoping and waiting that, that somebody, you know, something pops. So, uh-huh. um, I went to school for it for uh, audio engineering and, and uh, production out of Arizona. Uh, great program I went into. Everything was hands on from the third weekend. Uh, you was in front of consoles, mm-hmm. mixing, and, you know, turning knobs and, you know, messing stuff up, essentially. You know what I mean? That's the best way to learn. Uh, and then from there, did an externship in New York at uh, Chung King Studios. Uh, from there, that's why I really got, like, my feet wet. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? I was able to sit in on a lot of sessions. I worked with, like, Usher. Mm-hmm. Uh, I oh, you worked with Usher? Yeah, man, as, as an assistant engineer. Mm-hmm. Um, on Snoop sessions, I was on a couple Snoop sessions. Uh, when they did Welcome to the Plastic mm-hmm. Beach uh, with the Gorillas, so that was a, a lot of fun. Okay, okay. Uh, Ryan Leslie, uh, the whole Cash oh, Money, Young okay. Money Camp. Uh, you know, I had some names, man. Like the, the resume long, which is cool. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Um, and then after Chung King in New York, ended up going out to uh, to Miami and mm-hmm. working at the Hit Factory Criteria. Okay, okay. And, uh, you know, that's Bob Marley and all them. Yeah, yeah. You know, uh, <laughs> at the time that I was there, the Timothy Mosley group was there, which mm-hmm. is Timberland's camp. Uh, so I got a lot of exposure with Tim when he was in Studio mm-hmm. A. Cash Money, Young Money at the time was based out of there. So I got a lot of FaceTime with Wayne, Baby Slim, mm-hmm. Short Dog, uh, Mystical. When he first got out and signed with them, he was over there. Uh, so it was, it was a lot of exposure. Appreciate it. Uh, it was a lot of exposure in, the, in that realm. So it was cool to see, like, the sweat, blood, and tears that go on behind these boards. You know what I'm saying? Was it a hard transition being an artist for so long into into? Nah, because actually it, it made me appreciate, like, as an artist, the other side of the glass. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, it made me appreciate, like, oh, so whenever I was, when I was like, oh, run it back, this is what it felt like to them. Okay, you okay. You know what I mean? And, like, <laughs> when I would be like, oh, nah, nah, like, let me read, let me redo that verse, they would tell me stuff like, nah, we good, and this is why. And then now I know, like, oh, they was, you know, painting this, fading this, mm-hmm. you know, doing that, so. It, it was it was an easy transition for me just from a respect standpoint. So you say you rap, engineer, 
and rap engineer, right? Um, I like to call myself a singer, but my wife would obviously disagree. <laughs> was that uh, you on the? Uh, was that him? What song did you play? Diamonds and gold. Yeah. Okay. So okay. That's actually my wife on the hook. Oh, okay. Uh, okay. Yeah. So yeah. it was it was cool oh, to keep God. it like that. Yeah. Yeah. So. No, no, yeah, no, no. So uh, I try to keep it all like within within the fam. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like if I got people that that could rap, that could sing, that could whatever, like I go to them first. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like whether they trying to or not. Um, I got another single that uh, I sent out. It's called Do It Boy. Mm-hmm. And that's yep. uh, my wife's stepsister on that. Okay. okay. You know what I mean? So we put her on the hook. She had an interest. She came over one day and was like, hey, I feel like singing. Mm-hmm. And her older sister sang, and I knew more of her older sister as the artist. And, uh, I was like, yeah, I got to be playing. Like, let's do something. Mm-hmm. And then, like, the hook just came to me. I wrote it. And I was just like, hey, this is what I really want to sound like. And, you know, I tried to keep it within the circle. You know what I mean? So, so are you independent or are you signed? 100% independent. Yeah. Double so, up. So one yeah, of the things up, one you, of the I things I've been hearing about is called talent stacking. You familiar with that? Talent stacking, no. Okay. Right, well, man. it's pretty much like for independent artists especially. Okay. Really, it's probably really only for us. As far as doing multiple things like you do, mixing, engineering, yeah. and did you do that on purpose for the sake of talent stacking, or them just skills you developed? Nah, later? it was it was skills that I developed. Cause once again, like I just was looking for a way in the industry. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And then once I, once I figured out like, oh, I can get paid to make music. You know what I'm saying? I can get paid to be like the producer's hands essentially, mm-hmm. right? Cause the producer would tell me like, oh, I want I want it to sound like the piano's underwater. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So as an engineer, you got to translate that and be mm-hmm. like, this what this would sound like. I could do it with this. I could do it with that mm-hmm. or whatever. So it was more just like trying to get in the industry. Um, always was making beats and rapping with the homies like in the crib mm-hmm. and stuff. So it was, uh, you know, and like we were speaking on earlier, the transition was a lot easier just because I was already like diving in, already had the respect for that side. Mm-hmm. And I'm a technical person anyway. Like I always like to take stuff apart, see how it works, put it back together. Oh, word. You know what I'm saying? Like, so I like to learn, like, the computer software stuff. I'm mm-hmm. a big, like, tutorial like dude. Like a mad scientist in there? Uh, yeah. nah. <laughs> I don't know about the scientist, but I'm, I'm definitely mad. <laughs> tutorial, <laughs> you know what I'm tutorial, that's right. Yeah. Man, what's going on, y'all? It's your boy, Icy Jones, king of the merch. Oh, you yeah, know king what it of is. the merch. We here on My Rap Mentor. You know, I am a rap coach. You know, consultations is what I specialize Man, in. Man, with the business. And I'm also right. good with the pan on that microphone, yeah? Understand me, know, um, bro. We do got a clip if you like to use that. If you know, not, you good. I'm not gonna lie. I tried to do the clip. Okay. And I'm just Why can't nobody use the clip? Yeah, I tried to figure it out. Everybody young here, but can't nobody. Because when clip. you get when, when it's live <laughs> and you trying to get the clip and then you no, like, no, I bet. Uh, you know what man, I bet it's Casino. Like, he cannot use the clip, bro. He was like, <laughs> <laughs> we acting like we old or something. I'm trying to get the angle with this little thing. Yeah, he got the preset thing. You told everybody where you from already? Uh, yeah, Orlando, Florida. Uh, you know, grew up there. Uh, and then just came out to Vegas. I don't actually, I don't even think we touched on that yet. So, uh, originally from Orlando, Florida, came out to Vegas uh, probably like six, seven years ago. And, uh, you know, just been running and gunning out here. That's my topic right now. Yes. Moving across country and still yeah. going after your dream. Oh, yeah. Did you come here for that or you still continue to do nah, that? Nah, honestly, like I was in, so uh, we'll backtrack a little bit. So I went from Florida. Uh, to Arizona, uh-huh. to school in Arizona, and then uh, from Arizona did my externship in New York, uh, and then from New York, kind of ventured out back to Florida working at Hit Factory, and then it was around the time. Uh, oh, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah, I see. My, <laughs> nah, I see now let's yeah. study King of the Merch, King of the Clips. Now, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what you were saying, bro? <laughs> uh, yeah. So when I went, had went back out to Florida, man, uh, the studios started closing. Right. And oh, I okay. As, I noticed as an engineer, little, I noticed as an engineer, like less and less clients were coming to professional recording studios because the major issue at this time was like leaks, right? Like, oh. like anytime, anytime, Ye stepped in the studio, it got leaked. Yep. Anytime Drake stepped in the studio, it got leaked, and then uh, it turned into like you know what? If I just book out a hotel, uh, and I book out the sixth floor, the seventh floor, and mm-hmm. the eighth floor, and we work on the seventh floor. Can't nobody leak nothing. Nothing. It's only us up here. Yeah. Right? And then okay. if it do, we know who. We yeah, know who. yeah. Exactly, exactly. And we still checking, you know, Twitter accounts and all that on the way in and on the way out. Mm, right? We yeah. clocking all the stuff that's coming in and out of here. So uh, when I started realizing that that stuff was happening, um, I had to step back from the game and say, okay, like this is disappearing. You know what I'm saying? Like, Chung King went underwater and bef- right before I left, mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. or as I was leaving. Mm-hmm. And then uh, Hit Factory started to take a hit, you know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Because I started seeing less and less clients come through. Um, I ain't been back since, so I don't want to talk ill. You know right, what I'm saying? Right. They could be eating lovely right now. I just don't know. Right. Uh, but 
from where I, from the perspective that I was standing at, I had to step back and say, okay, like how can I still feed the fan? Mm -hmm. yeah. You know what I mean? Um, so I had to really just go and do my own thing and uh, left Miami, went to Arizona for some time. And then from Arizona came out here. And uh, the whole time I was just like chasing music, you know? Mm -hmm. um, and then actually recently, this past year is when I jumped back in because I took like a 10, nine, 10 year hiatus off Dang. music. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, which I don't recommend any artist do uh, for a number of reasons. But the, my number one reason that I came back was just because I wasn't the same person uh -huh. individually. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Like, I'm not, I'm not one to really, like, do therapy or, like, really have, like, group consultation sessions. Like, all my, all my uh, emotional release happens through music. Okay. You know, you know what I mean? So yeah. if, you're not, if you're not doing that, you're bottling up. That's what Overtime said, remember? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah so when you're bottling yourself up like that, um, it leaks out to the rest of your life. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, it started, yeah. I started realizing, like, man, I'm not as great as a dad as I thought I was going to be. Mm -hmm. And I'm not as great as a husband as I thought I was going to be. Mm -hmm. I'm not as great as a whatever, a son, a brother, mm -hmm. you know, any of that stuff that yeah. I thought I was going to be. Yeah. Um, and then uh, I went to a concert out here uh, by an artist that my wife and I are huge fans of, John Bellion. I don't know if you guys are familiar. Yeah, yeah, I know. Um, not, not like he signed the RCA right now. Got his own label uh, mm -hmm. popping. Also, not a like top top hitter like a Jay Z or nothing not like that. Super commercial. Just, yeah, like. not a super commercial. But what I respect about Homie Grind was if you go on his YouTube, everything is taped. Mm -hmm. Like we in the studio, we taping it. And the yeah. delivery and just like the way he presented himself as an artist was pure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Um, Anyway, I went to his concert and it just like relit the fire. Yeah. Got to the house and I was like, literally told my wife, like, hey, I'm about to take this bread, this bread, this bread, and I'm building nice. it up. Mm -hmm. And we built the studio back up. Um, was just like getting back into the feel of things, got the Pro Tools set up, all the softwares and all that stuff, and then just started pumping out music again. And it was like, I could tell, like, okay, I definitely took a step back talent wise because I've been off so long. Mm -hmm. But to get back in the grind and like get your feel back, it was kind of just like riding a bike. Oh, yeah, dust you know off. What I'm saying, yeah, like you dust off, off the pan. You know <laughs> did you have a different name back then than you do now? Nah, uh, honestly, when I was like in high school and stuff, they used to call me Silence. Mm -hmm. And that's because like I wasn't much of a talker. Like I would just be kind of be in the ciphers and they'd be like, who next? And then okay, I would okay. just jump in. So mm -hmm. that everybody was kind of like element of surprise type of thing. Mm -hmm. But, uh, when I was in the recording studio as an engineer, uh, the studio owner of Chung King, his name was John. And you know, my, my first name, Jonathan. Mm -hmm. So I went in there and he's like, what's your name? And I was like, everybody call me John. He's like, no, they don't, because that's my name. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It was, like, it was an old Jewish like, already so took I'm it. like, okay. already took I'm an intern at the time. Like, oh, so Yo, they lost. Like, well, yeah, <laughs> what you want to call me? Like, Copyright figure it out. <laughs> so I was like, all right, well, my initials is JL. Let's just rock with that. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I, it, it worked out. It stuck. You know what I'm saying? So I just rock with that. Yeah. Uh, with J.O. And it's, it kind of rolls off the tongue. Uh -huh. You know what I'm saying? Easy. So, yeah. Easy. So two letters. Can't really mess it up that much. Nope. One so, question I got, too. Yeah. Moving for a lot of these people out here that want to take that transition to move from where they grew up at to yeah. another city. How do you get, I mean, you got a wife or a girl, yeah, right? Wife, kids. kids how that. do you get your family to get behind you on that move? Mm. Um, first, first and foremost, you got to take yourself serious for mm -hmm. anybody else to take you serious, right? You got to set the tone for your for your life in that way. Mm -hmm. um, so if you coming in and, and you lack a days ago, right? Like you you putting time on and then taking time off and all mm -hmm. that stuff, um, the, your circle not gonna pay attention to you like that. Okay, right? they're not gonna respect your hustle because mm -hmm. you're not out there every day grinding, grinding, grinding. So I think that me coming in and really having that that. Uh, that grind and that passion, my wife already respected it. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So when I was like, hey, we're going to move here, what you think? She was like, I'm with, I'm it. with it. You know what I'm saying? And it wasn't even that we moved for the music. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, yeah, but yeah. she just yeah. knew, like, whatever this dude touches, he ends up turning to gold. Nice. Yeah, no matter how long it takes, like, I'm going to make it work. We're going to mm -hmm. make it work. We're going to figure this out. Nice. You know what I'm saying? We're so, going to make yeah. it I work. I was in a similar, I don't Shout have kids yet, but I was in a similar situation, yeah. so I just wanted to hear his. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, I do believe in that. I do believe in that. Yeah, for sure. You it's, got the second question? No, no, it's, you can do your thing. I oh. just want to know that. Oh, okay. I thought you said two questions. But maybe I maybe not. You can go. <laughs> you can go. So, when it comes down to marriage, bro. Yeah. I am so thankful that this guy is not holding that back. Yeah. Nah. You know how many rappers <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. are married. <laughs> facts. Yeah, facts. But you sure. swear to God they single. Yeah, all day. All day. If you really take in their lyrics for face value, you would yeah. believe they're single. Yeah. But you literally are wearing your ring today. Yeah, all day. You have now yeah, spoken yeah. about your wife several times. Yeah. Why? Uh, cause she is my rock, bro. Like that's that's uh, you know, uh, yeah, I'm not a religious person, but I understand like the Bible and the stories in there are great stories and they're great moral teachings, no matter what your faith is, mm -hmm. right? Um, 
So thank you, bro, for saying <laughs> that. No problem, no problem. So for me, like you know, the the whole thing with like, oh, you, your wife is your rib, right? Mm -hmm. I think like, yeah, she your rib for sure. She a part of you, but I think like. Uh, my wife is more than that. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? Before we got married, she was my best friend. Mm -hmm. I confided in her more, more than I confided in all the homies or anything like that because no matter what, she wasn't going to tell me, yeah, bro, it's fire. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Nah, because we representation of each other. Uh -huh. So if it's trash or if I look a certain way or, or she don't like whatever, she's going to let me know, like, hey, this is your perception. Step that, that drip you know up today. And, and <laughs> she, exactly. So she uh, she was really, like, a good, great support, man. And uh, still to this day, like, I, I always told her, like, you know, you the one I chose to marry because I never trusted another woman with raising my kid. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, and, and once I knew I was going to find this woman, I was going to invest everything in there. Mm -hmm. now, it ain't all peaches and rainbow. Of course not. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Like, let's, let's, let's get that out in, yeah. in the open. It's not for sure. But um, if you have that respect, and this is in any relationship, a business relationship, friendship, yes. whatever. Yes. Um, if you start from respect, respect comes love. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying, yeah. and after after love comes uh, like pretty much just like whatever stronger bond is after that covenant, whatever you want to call it, loyalty, loyalty, and longevity. Big, big, big you know what I mean? Loyalty for sure. Yeah, and then that longevity after that, absolutely. Because now that that three uh, cord strand, right? It's God, husband, wife. Yeah. It's not easily broken, bro. Nah, not at all. It's the strongest bridge mm -hmm. you've ever seen in your life. Straight up, right? Yeah. So thank you for for oh. saying that, cause not. Um, do you know any artists that came up here and were like speaking on their wife for real? No other than Not you. many, right? I mean, even I don't even say much. Right? <laughs> yeah. Even I don't that's even real, say though, much. Now that I think of it. Yeah. I'm but just a private person. Yeah, yeah private yeah, person. Yeah, <laughs> outside of music. Though, <laughs> but though. in reality, but I, <laughs> I just like when guys do that yeah. and can understand the difference between our real life and reality. Absolutely. Because when I yeah. looked at Snoop Dogg and how long he been married, but Man. Snoop Dogg showed us. I'm a pimp. Yeah, he had the girls time. on collars at the Grammy, dog collars and stuff like that. Yeah. And it's like you got a whole yeah. wife, a whole and wife. three, four kids at <laughs> the right. house. Two rows behind. I think someone would be yeah, doing right, that. Right. Uh, someone you know would be doing saying? that because I guess they persona. Yeah, that's yeah. the persona. So I'm glad y'all touching on persona. <laughs> yeah. Because right? my whole thing as an artist, right, or like even as like a label owner, it's like uh -huh. anybody I mess with, like the first number one thing that Double Up represents, bro, is 100% authenticity. Uh -huh. Like you got to be real through and through. There's no capping, no faking, whatever you want to call it, fronting. There's none of that allowed. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And the fact that, like, the game is turned into what it is, where mm -hmm. there is a difference between image and persona mm -hmm. in real life, I don't get that. No. You know what I'm saying? Because no. how you how you could live one thing, what you writing about? Yeah. If you're not writing about what you're doing, what you mm -hmm. writing about? Yeah. Fantasy. Right. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So then, like, a lot of these artists that, that is out here, and this is no shade. Like, I no. don't know them personally, yeah. you know, obviously. You know what I'm saying? But like you said, to your point, like, people out here running and gunning, and then you're like, oh, hold on. Oh, he married with kids, the picket uh -huh. fence, the house, the whole thing. Right? But you would have never knew that. Never knew but that. But to me, like, I mean, even in one, of, in, in one of my songs, like, yeah, I got my wife on the hook. But, like, on one of the, uh, the intro to the tape uh, that I'm putting out, uh, it says, like, I, I, I what was it? It was, uh. I got pretty much something along the lines like I got this queen so this king could dodge all mm -hmm. these fake hoes. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And that's the thing. Like you, yeah. you people like, oh, she looked like this, she bad mm -hmm. like that. The, yeah, that ain't where it's at, uh -huh. bro. You know what I'm saying? Where it's really at is can we sit down and break bread? Yeah. And can we sit down and have a conversation about building something? Right. You know what I'm saying? Because like, we'll, we'll get caught up in uh -huh. that flex on Instagram. Did, did you guys always start off? When y'all first start rapping, did you guys always start off being true to self in your music? I don't uh, lie, I didn't at the beginning. Nah, yes. in the beginning. <laughs> in the beginning, me, in the beginning for me, I started <laughs> rapping as a youngster. Right? Yeah, so me too, everything, yeah. Everything we looked at was Which, gold chains. Yeah, that was my favorite rapper every time. Yeah. 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 Right, you know what I'm saying? Women, all yeah. that stuff. And then, like, after a short, very short amount uh -huh. of time, I ran out of stuff to write about. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Because I wasn't living it. Mm -hmm. I, yeah. So I had to write about the real stuff. Mm -hmm. What made me trans start transitioning was, because I'm a thinker. So it was like, man, this don't feel good. Yeah, right. <laughs> I don't feel like having a persona today when I start yeah. the career. Yeah, so I started. Because everybody know them lies. You got to keep up with them. I did. They don't last forever. I did. I started, I started rapping off real. Uh-huh. Um, because I couldn't stand the fake in uh -huh. music That's because we thought they were real. Yeah, at that time, I still thought they was unreal. And it real. broke your heart at when that you found out it was when I started, I started around 11, too, so I thought they was real still. At that right. time, yeah, <laughs> when right, I got right. my teens, I'm like. You know who, <laughs> when I remember. Uh, who gave me the reality was the diss that Easy E gave to Dr. Dre, mm. and made me see that Dr. Dre was wearing silk 
pajamas and different <laughs> stuff in World Class Wrecking Crew, and he was uh-huh. not a gangster. At all. It was just an image, and it was their reality in Compton and in L.A. and things of right, that nature. Right, but right. Dr. Dre was no easy E. Yeah. Uh-huh. Ice Cube was no easy E. They'll always tell you he was the real dope dealer, he had the real investment money, and we had the talent. Yep. So when I, when I seen how easy E dissed Dr. Dre and it was true, I was like, oh, oh wow. Wow. You feel like something right. punched you in the it stomach. It was like, nothing oh. but a G thing, baby. <laughs> you not a really gangster. You not a really gangster. <laughs> you ain't from no neighborhood. But you telling us it's a G thing. Yeah, right. You know what I'm saying? And so that's why he had a Snoop Dogg. Like, this th- This is a real one. Yeah. Uh-huh. That's why you get yeah. it easy. This is a real one. So right. what does that look like? Who you connected to is who you yeah, are right type thing. Feather, yeah. Right? right. But no, it was just about the business. That right. bird. Because, yeah. yes... Even though Easy E was a dope dealer, he was still a businessman. Facts. And when he seen the opportunity, he was like, I got the bread. Facts. And then Dr. Dre, even though he was in World Class Wrecking Crew, he knew it was time for a change. Yep. And we got to talk about something else. You yep. know what I'm saying? And that's when they came up with the niggas with attitude. So mm-hmm. once I knew it was about the business, I had to learn the business side of the industry because all of these artists from uh, uh, R&B to hip hop to pop were getting ripped off. Yes, I'm almost glad I ain't come out back then. I would have got ripped off, bro. One, one of the craziest things I, I remember uh, writing in my notes was, you can do a half a million records, which is gold, and walk away with forty thousand dollars. Yeah, if you're lucky. <laughs> or you can sell eight thousand copies at five dollars mm-hmm. yourself back. and make forty thousand dollars. Yes. You know what I'm saying? I have to pay your distribution companies. Yeah. Correct. And so two of my favorites has always been E-40 and Master Mm. P because of the trunk Mm. and then the distribution through the small stores across America, bro. The mom and pops. Period. And Mm -hmm. I think that model still exists today because there's still mom and pop record stores Mm -hmm. around the country. I honestly think it's going to be more relevant today because a lot of these mainstream artists, I was talking to my homie last night, they're not really getting paid, minus the top one. Correct. All that recoup. Them big budget videos. Yes. Yes. Most of them ain't selling records oh, like no. that. Yeah. The streaming. A lot of them are in debt. Right. We right. probably make more yeah. money than a lot of them. About the same. Pretty much. So I think that's gonna be a that's gonna be across the board. I think even more <laughs> major artists are gonna start doing that. Yeah, what you think? That's, that's, what you think? Absolutely. No, and that actually reminds me of a, of a, when I was in the studio in Chunk came, um, yeah. Busta had came in oh. in New York and super respectful. Uh-huh. Shout out Busta. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Rap guy from, yes. From, yes. Uh, from the from the trap called Quest stuff to mm. all the way up. You yep. know what I'm saying? My yep. dude is, is the truth. But, yes. Uh, Bus came in and he was he was on the phone, man. And he uh and I think actually they shot a YouTube video about it. You could you could watch it mm-hmm. on YouTube. He's okay. like sitting on the stool and he's saying like, man, back in the day it was nothing. We used to drop one point five on the video, not even yeah. think about it. Not even right? think. And until that last check came we like, whoa. <laughs> Where the bread? Oh, you spent it. You know what I'm saying? And it was like, oh, and it made a lot of artists do the business research. Like, why am I not making X amount of dough? Yep. You know what I'm saying? And, and uh, it, it really turned into, like, this whole thing for me where it's like, man, independence is a big thing. Mm-hmm. Yes. And it doesn't mean, I think it was like, I think it was Chance the Rapper that got on stage at one award show, and he was like, independence don't mean you do it by yourself. No. Right, nah. which is facts. Yeah. Independence is just like, we going to call the shots yeah. how we want to do it. Yeah. Which makes me respect people like, you know, rest in peace, King Nip. You yeah. know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? Yes. Makes me respect people like that. And that's really, since we on the subject, that's really where the double up came from. Yes. Was Nip. You know yes. what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. It was definitely inspired by him. So this is kind of my version of paying homage. Three or four I mean? times and run it up. What made, uh, <laughs> exactly. what, uh, even a question for you, like, I just like talking. For you sure, know what I mean? Sure. Uh, what made, well, what made y'all even have that transition with the business? Mm-hmm. To uh, even transition is getting into business because usually when we start off as artists, that's all we focus on. Yeah, but we, we on this side of the glass yeah. only. Right? Yeah, like <laughs> mm-hmm. all we want to do. We is think we just dope. Like, we just gonna make money. Yeah, yeah. You yeah. Do it, what made you transition? Like, it was just really having ownership, bro. Mm-hmm. Like understanding like what it really mean to, meant to be an owner. And before Nip, like I've always been a big Jay Z fan. Uh huh. Yeah. You know what I'm saying and Hov being who he is to the game yeah. and who he is as a mentor to other rappers like your Meek Mills, your Drakes, your Waynes, like all of them, like. Just following him, and then people really sleep on the lyrical concept of like 444, and because yes. there's El Kingdom Come, even there's yes. a lot of game yes. that he gives you in those. Yes. You know what I'm saying? And and I think that for me, being like 
quote unquote like brainwashed by that type of music uh-huh. made me understand like oh yeah nah like they not really doing it for us mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying this is really for them at the mm-hmm. end of the day we just a product yeah. you know what I mean and, and learning like about like his other investments like Uber Carol's Daughter mm-hmm. things of that nature made me realize like oh rap is much bigger than just getting behind yeah, the mic yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. hip hop as a culture is much bigger than just stepping out on the stage and, and rocking 10,000 people mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying we was built on that ground originally right mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying and that's that's the thing so I think for me as far as like making that transition into ownership a lot of it for me was just like what's the right move as an artist Mm -hmm. right what's the right move as a person Mm. You know what I mean? As a dad, as a as a husband, because yeah. I got to I can't turn around on my kids and be like, "Yeah, I can't pass you nothing that you see me." <laughs> nah, years yeah. Old. What about you, you Mr. Saying? Jones? What for made me, you transition? It was uh, it was Master P and how he saved uh, Snoop Dogg's career. Mm. Mm-hmm. So when I seen how uh, he was able to take like Mr. Cool and Snoop and Mia and tru and silk the shocker and then his brother c murder and then mr fiend and like he had a whole slew of artists and made them all millionaires then he saved snoop dogg's career bro he was like on death row (laughs) he was slim to none Uh and snoop will tell you he said but i seen it snoop will tell you uh masterpiece saved his life but i seen it in real time Right. Which, by the way, for all the young people that listen to this show, I understand, like, that is the true definition of a boss. Mm-hmm. Somebody that could feed everybody else. Yes. And they're not, mm-hmm. they not short and coming themselves. Right. You know what I'm saying? And it's not about, like, oh, I saved this person, I saved that person. Mm-hmm. It's, we need to all eat. Right. Mm-hmm. Period. At the Period. end of the day, because we move stronger as a collective than we do as individuals. He used, I agree. He used the same model for every album. <laughs> everything but broke, don't fix it. Don't yeah, fix yeah, it. don't fix it. So everything he dropped, when he did, he just took it as a template and did it for me at X, did it for everybody, uh-huh. right? So I'm like, wow. And then he got his own clothes, which was the No Limit clothing. Yep. Like I'm like, wait a minute. He just made this uh, actual this clothing is, brand. Yeah, yeah. This is a real thing. And people man. buying it. Yeah, and wearing it. And right? Yeah. So then I look at... Um, just E40 and how he took his cousins and, 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 and brother, sister, family and made them millionaires through one man, which was his uncle, who showed him the real distribution game. Uh-huh. And they look, they said that E40 and them used to sell 150,000 copies every album they dropped. And back then, if a tape was fourteen ninety nine, Oh, you know back then, they had like 80 songs. Right. <laughs> Right. You know, back then, right? Well, not twenty, <laughs> but you know, Making even money, even bro. though it's like, are you kidding me? He made one point five million if they was all ten dollars yeah, right. every album, every yeah, album. indie, bro, that he dropped, and, he and that most was of that just money too. Most of it he keep. Oh yeah, but it's and it was all like regional type stuff, and yeah, that's remember see. the Southwest Riders type yeah, thing, all right? right? Yeah. And that's how E Forty and Master clicked up because uh, Master used to go up to um. To the Bay Area, Richmond or whatever, and then E40 could travel down south. So they got that connection. And actually, Lil John uh, saved um, um, E40's career when he was in limbo. Mm. Uh, E40 said, "God, little God told him call Little John," and he called Little John, bro. And that's what snap your fingers, yeah, yeah. do your step, right? <laughs> hey, I was right? In Florida when I tried that. Bad. Yeah, bro. Okay, so boom. That's what changed my life uh, when it comes to being wanting to be in business and making your brand, uh, like your logo, a brand uh-huh. like 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 spread it like mayonnaise. Yeah. And that's like what Double Up is going to be on everything, uh, right? Everything. You got the mask. I got it shirt. on the license plate. The yeah, way, yeah. Everything. yeah, it's everywhere. So that's what made me do it was seeing those two black mm-hmm. men at a younger age. And then they had kids and everything, wife and everything. Uh, Master P, uh, excuse me. Yeah, Master P and E-40 never shot away from saying they were married. Uh-huh. So yeah, those two guys. Everybody else was just like artists to me, and it's yeah. like, but if they could do it, I got I can do it. Yeah. yeah, my transition was a lot different. It had nothing to really. What what made me transition? I started getting into entrepreneurship, so I started really other than music that was like the most second thing I was passionate about. Mm-hmm. Right. So I started really studying like entrepreneurship, like yeah. building yourself up, yeah. like a brand and stuff. Probably yeah. like Tony Robbins and them got me in that. Okay. Because one of my older homies put me on that. Okay. So when I started studying that, I started realizing a lot of this can transition into music. So then I just merged the two. Hey, yeah. to my rap mentor. That's why you're watching that. Mentor. But wow. <laughs> they dropped that. But uh, <laughs> I just pretty much that's what made me merge the two. And I realized a lot of it transitioned to hip hop. So it got me more into like the business part of rap, like 
mm-hmm. just been been addicted to it. I'm not gonna lie, bro. Before I was a Christian hip hop artist, I was a secular artist, and the name of my label was called Senior Scholar Music Productions. Okay. Mm-hmm. Senior Scholar Music, uh, basically, I had several artists. I had a joint venture partnership with my cousin's label, which was a uh, team president. Uh-huh. And honestly, bro, I, th- my logo was an owl, like Drake. Wow. Oh, uh, yeah. Wow. But I had the owl before Drake. Wow. Had the bandana on, had the... Um, yeah, the hood out. <laughs> he, yeah, but he had a uh, the graduation <laughs> cap. The graduation. Because senior the scholar owl? music, right? Oh, and he was sitting fire. on a tassel. You feel yeah, me? that's fire. So that was like... Everybody had to have an owl shirt or yeah. whatever. And back then, I ain't know nothing about silk screen, nothing about vinyl. We yeah. was air, getting airbrush uh-huh. shirts Ooh. walking around. Super you feel me? Yeah. Like, yeah, that's the era. Right. One shirts. of my shirts, bro, right. everybody had to wear it and take a picture in it. Like, like everybody had one, uh, the, the shirt, but only had one. <laughs> and everybody was wearing it, taking pictures in it. We was just trying, bro. So, yeah. you know, but then, of course, um, God came in, man, showed me the reality of Christ, like the, the true um just the true Christ right. and um, my partners uh, they were good at still are good at graphic designs and stuff mm-hmm. and then um, that's when I knew like okay we I was doing it wrong I was right. on the right path mm-hmm. yeah. but I was doing it wrong and that's when they showed me a uh, silk screen and showed me ordering in bulk and show me garment, yeah DTG yeah. yeah. right and, and now then your shirts are sleeker now he had, <laughs> with the big shirts uh, the, shout out Travis Gluckler <laughs> He had the tower, bro. Uh, uh, the, oh, the, the, the burning, wow. the burning. So that was that changed the bro, game for a lot of people. All we had to do was order the CDs with yep. the cover on it, yep. and then order our uh, actual cover uh-huh. with the slim jewel cases. Yep. And now we just burning all day. Slim bro, we used to burn cases. thousands of copies. A slim jewel case. Yes, I bro. How many listeners really understand what a slim jewel case? Is. Talk to him, man. <laughs> Talk right. to him, man. So now we upsell them though. Uh-huh. Yeah. So right, because right. they're going out of style, it's like. How much is a vinyl album right now? If you try to go find one, probably more than what it was, yeah. right? Yeah. Because it's like thirty bucks a pop, it's right? Crazy money. Because it's 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 still a limited or special edition. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Right. So that's where I'm at with with still getting hard copy albums and selling them, mm-hmm. and then charging for like upcharging for like an autograph or yeah. upcharging for like a picture, a, a meet and greet. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, like putting right, together right. a package. So anyway, that's where it's at. When when I transitioned over, bro, and my homie showed me what it is, I asked God for my own, and He gave me but God situations, bro. Mm-hmm. And that's what it's been ever since. Y'all both talked about labels. How you you had a label too, right? You mm-hmm. said at the beginning, right? Mm-hmm. Um, you got one now, right? Yeah. How do you, being an artist and doing all this stuff, how do y'all manage the artist and still be an artist? So That's something I'm thinking about so for me, stepping into one day. For me, we are, we are still very small. It's myself and the homie Fresh. Shout out Fresco. Shout that's out. my guy right there. Fresco Fresh Double Up. Yeah, he just shared it. Yep. Yeah, that's my guy. Um, so the part label on it with me. Uh, him and I are really the only artists on the label. Uh-huh. You know what I'm saying? Like, we span out and we get, like, like I was talking earlier, we try to keep it in the circle. If there's talent within the circle, we're going to use it, yes. right? Um, but as far as like the management piece, it's all to us one and the same. Yes. You know what I'm saying? Because no matter what, we got to take care of each other. And yes. We got to take care of ourselves, mm-hmm. right? And we got to take care of the brand, the business, all that. Yeah. So for me, like as an artist, if I'm like, okay, I got to do X, Y, Z to stay in their face, mm-hmm. right? That's still, to me, it's like encompassing the marketer, the artist, the creative director, really all in one. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, you got to wear the many hats or whatever, but it's, it's, really just like one and the same for me it's just, it's like when i'm it's the same thing like when i create right like when i create i mix and record at the same time yeah right reason being is because i'm getting closer and closer to the end result yes. every time right yes. but how much of a less efficient process is that if i got an artist producer engineer assistant engineer everybody, everybody gotta, come gotta come in, in and mm-hmm. put their mm-hmm. two cents in mm-hmm. right and it slows the process down. slows the so process much. down right which is why to me major recording studios died out mm-hmm. because you had to spend at dollars for every second that was wasted yeah. time you be right? stressed out sweat stressed i remember when i went out. to the, my first one i was sweating like oh, yeah. <laughs> make the damn. song not be good I mean, you be sweating I remember. Yeah, <laughs> you know right. come on i see you <laughs> know song, you know that era i did like damn i just dropped 350 on this 12-hour <laughs> block, and I don't even like what we did. I don't did. like nothing. Swag, like, like, oh, you know what rushing saying? your bars so you out. Got, yeah, so then you come back, and that's the thing, right? You rushing. You Everything didn't learn your voice. You didn't learn your voice. Yep. I got so oh, many I had to go through so much of that. Oh. With, where I'm like, hey, wait, they're like, yeah, I've been in the studio for X amount of years, and I'm like, so why you don't understand how to breathe yep. when you rap? Yep. Like, where's that? And that's because they rush in, mm-hmm. right? Um, so being able to be like that one 
Like, I joke and be like, oh, I'm the one-stop shop or whatever. But being able to be that one person that can wear those hats uh-huh. and call those shots, like, I feel like when we do begin to sign other artists, the only my goal is just to empower those artists to do the same. Okay. It's a right? template. It's a template. Like, you yeah. were just talking about with Master, Master P. P and all them, right? Mm-hmm. It's a template. Like, because one thing about, like, of course, like, if I bring up Hove and Nip, right, is I believe in the same uh-huh. thing they believe in. Like, yeah. we all should be able to eat. Nobody should be able to, like, should be stealing each other for intellectual property. Yeah. That's trash to me. Yeah. Like, it doesn't make sense to no. me. You know what I'm saying? So, once we begin to sign artists, it'll be like a copy and paste thing. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Like, where are your talents at? Because I know you don't just rap. Mm-hmm. What else do you do? One of the things, too, I have a lot of artists that are new rappers, right? Right. And sometimes they try to do too much at the beginning. Okay. How do you, what would you tell them in order to be, because you do multiple things, but now you're efficient at right, different things. Yeah, right. What about a new artist that's trying to do multiple things? Uh, define what your goal is, mm. first and foremost. Define what your goal is. Like, If you are engineering because you just don't have funds to afford uh-huh. an engineer, then do what you got to do to get to a certain step, but understand that that's not your end goal, mm-hmm. right? So, like, if you like, man, I could pay for a mastering session or a mixing session, right? But I don't have nobody to sit here and record with me or whatnot. Learn how to record yourself. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Hundreds of artists do that. The first artist I stepped in the studio with was Ryan Leslie. Yeah. He had a U87 literally in front of the screen. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I'm like, what's, why is it so close to here? Like, because my only recognition is, like, you got to go in the booth. Yep. He like, nah, this is... Sound right ahead of his time, the bro. Right the ahead of his time. Yeah, the whole acoustical environment. Right ahead of his time, bro. Yep. Yeah, right. We've been doing stuff. Man, like, we doing now out, back shout then. Out, yeah. Shout out R. Leslie. Yeah, shout out, out, out Leslie. Show, for man. Sure. Stupid amount of talent in that one, man. It's crazy. But I think for those guys, like, man, it's really just like, like you got to dive in head first. You're mm. going to get your face yes. smashed in. Period. Yes. What happen. about the younger crowd that tries to – because I, I think some of the artists have a problem. Because it seems like you mastered rap for the most part before you transitioned or got really uh, good at least, right? Yeah, I was going to say master. Sometimes, so like, <laughs> yeah, not bad, but you got really good enough yeah, that you can yeah. pick on another, you can take on another activity. Yeah, Sometimes, sure. you know, the newer era, they tend to want to speed it up. And a lot of times, microwave they, they've barely been rapping, but they try to do a multiple things yeah. and they start spreading themselves thin in yeah, a lot of areas. So, so like, so what, both of y'all, like, what do you think they should, steps they should take? I mean, I know I keep taking the helm on these questions. I see my bad, but uh, <laughs> no, 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 but he asked it's the show interview. But I know, like being at the like show with my rap mentor, like I need to, like I would like for you to di- dive in too because sure. you're gonna teach. Uh-huh. You know what I'm saying so. Uh, but for me, for like those younger kids that's really out there, like running and gunning. Shout out to the fact that they're fearless. First of all, okay, foremost. Like, like jump into that, right? Yes, sir. Like let's talk about the fact that they're fearless. But the other side of that too is like you gotta understand that things take time. Pace. Right? And like you were just saying, like the microwave generation, yeah. like I'm going to jump in and they affect the, they, they think like, oh, I'm going to jump in, I'm going to buy this Pro Tools, and I'm going to get a Grammy in six months. I'm, yes. I'm out of cloud oh, overnight. Yeah, it don't work like that. You could Not throw, always. You could throw 100000 in the club to you 40, bro, yeah. and you still n- never hit a Grammy stage. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, yeah. So it's just understanding like your end goal first, remaining fearless for sure, and then just try everything, bro. Because the only way you're going to know if it works is, is if, if you, you try it and it don't work. Yeah, yeah. I do want to say this. I don't know if it's one word or two words, but I think it's one word. Outsource. Oh, all day. All day. I run yeah, very my career path from outsourcing almost everything. There's minimal time where I'll press my own shirts, right. buy my own vinyl, weed it and everything. Yep. You know what I'm saying? Yep. But for the most part, you know, bulk. Yeah. Ordering, right? Yeah, drop uh, and all that. yeah. yeah. and then uh, you know, like my store's dropship type. Then I have um I have an assistant, like a real live mm-hmm. assistant. You know, it was <laughs> it was it was <laughs> yeah, right? like I said, a real like live actual. assistant. <laughs> it was my wife at a point in time, but oh, I be man. moving, so uh God put an assistant in my path. You know, oh, he yeah. just took he took great care of me one day for a show. And I was like, I've never been taking that you know, well taken care of yeah. uh, for an event. You know what I'm saying? Um, just the caliber of the way he did things. And I just asked yeah. him, bro, ooh, like, do you work with any other artists? He was like, no. I was like, can you please be my assistant? All yes. Day. Because I double book myself and, you know, I might not yeah. be there on time and all because this weird you're stuff. Because yeah. you're wearing 150 hats. Right. So that one thing turned my whole life around when it comes yeah, to the okay. entertainment. Having an assistant. So Speaking of that, too. I, mean, cause I got yeah, a question yeah. for both no, of y'all, too, because yeah. I'm in a particular point where, you know, when you wear so many hats so long and you get good at it, how do you, you find – it It's not oh. that, but how do you find 
people that like a team that can because I'm pretty sure y'all both good at a lot of stuff, right? So isn't it hard for you to find another engineer that can mix it to your your caliber um, or like how yeah. do you find that? That's, that's the part I'm stuck so in because now I'm so good at a lot of stuff. Yeah. And I know there's people better. It right, wasn't hard. But um but like he said, bump your head. Yeah. Go spend the two hour minimum. You know what I'm saying? And see how they work. Right. You feel uh-huh. me? That's how right. I found the great engineers, you know, spending a little minimum. But like digital people and. and yeah. And, and then, that. you know, again, outsourcing. Fiverr.com is one of the oh, best oh, places. Great, yeah. great right? resource. Man. And to Fiverr, they're great. feasible, great right? Super feasible. Shout out to Fiverr. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I have to give us some sponsors. My <laughs> Rap Mentor, you know, we got a lot of information for you. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like where you, we bumped our heads enough oh. where you could pay a small fee yeah. and you will find uh, out how not to bump your head. We bumped out so you don't got to get a concussion. You ain't got to get, you feel me? <laughs> yeah. you ain't gotta get bit by the snake. <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, so so that's, that's how I feel. Um, I do want to get into this playlist, man. Oh, yeah. uh, we got the homie in the building. That, you feel man? me? What's hey, that, we man? play Double Up, bro. We rocking with Double Up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right? So, so, um, man, I want to play, so, so. uh, play uh, Do It. Boy, boy. Uh, do you have that on your phone? Uh, I do. I got all of them. I got Dual Boy, Diamonds, and Gold, and Not at All on here. Okay, so can you give me all three of those, but just uh, uh, the ver- first verse in the hook uh, of each song? Man. Yeah, I, you want me to play it off the phone? That's what you're saying? Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. So yeah. what I'm going to do is I'm, we're going to take it to commercial. We're going to yep. play a couple songs while you get yourself ready. For sure. Yeah, yeah, all, right. all right. Yo, we're on My Rap Mentor right now. Thank y'all oh, yeah. for sticking with us. Thank y'all for watching. We got J.O. in the building. Follow him on Instagram, underscore J.O. Makes Music. That's underscore J.O. Makes Music. He's the only artist that got a, a simple name to spell. Simple. <laughs> That's the bros in the building. You know, we got bros in oh, the building. Oh, you already know. My Rap Mentor. We'll be right back after these good old messages. The homies in the building, man. We finna play these songs. And um, just give me one second so I can get this my life together. Dang, you, you know dang. these these phones, man. How they? What be. can they? What can they submit to the playlist? A lot of people ask me that. That's you in charge of that. What, what, <laughs> <laughs> what can they submit? Uh, <laughs> one two my, my check. Uh, just uh, DM. You know, DM on Instagram, okay. um, Messenger on Facebook, or you can actually email me at icjonesmusicbooking at gmail dot com. That's i c j o n e z music booking at gmail dot com. And you could definitely find us. Um, so let's uh, get this popping, man. Yeah, 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 man. So I got them on. I got them just to show y'all. No, I got them on a little drive. Um, oh, okay. Yeah, so I'm ready to go. I, di- I got diamonds to go, so just give me the other two. Oh, okay. I got right. to you. So um, give us about three, four minutes. We'll be right back. Ink tattoo. We do. XS Ink Tattoo. We do everything in excess. Body ink and piercings. Dermal piercings only $50. Palm size portrait tattoos. You can't beat the price of $300 at XS Ink Tattoo. Phone number 702-333-1449. That's 702-333-1449. Find them on Facebook, Instagram, XS Ink Tattoo. You can email them at info at xsinktattoo.com. Find them online at xsinktattoo.com. They're open seven days a week from 10 a.m. to 11 p.m. Let them know Icy Jones sent you. xsinktattoo.com. Visit them online or go see them in person. 8525 Southeastern in Green Valley, Las Vegas, Nevada. By the way, all of your piercings come with jewelry, so you don't have to worry at excess ink tattoo and body piercings. Hey, <laughs> it's D Baby. <laughs> Can I? Oh, 
<laughs> Take a walk in my own way, say can you feel it? My heart been led astray, say ain't no way that you can heal it I'm trying to reach a meal, but if you beat me, I'ma still live If that bitch nigga succeed in living dreams, then I'ma kill it, say that ain't fair huh? I'm glad you pussy is all well or not How you sound when take my life, I guess I'm scared, not nah, scared for you Demon say, deep baby, what you gonna do? Go load that truck and wish me luck, I'ma be home by two And I say, ain't no way that you gon' take my soul Hood cry, came up to cry, cause the world's so cold And I know, I know, I know, ayy So I know, I know, I know, ayy And I say, ain't no way that you gon' take my soul Hood cry, came up to cry, cause the world's so cold And I know, I know, I know, ayy So I know, I know, I know, ayy Got 20k around my neck cause I'm solidified Got my mom they tied on my face cause we just live to die Got chin hairs growing guessing that's the winds who come in the diamonds. Stoners, big blood rollers, twist and tuck in like that swish of pain and perfect picture figure. Like the curveballs, you gotta get them, redirect them, keep it pushing. Life don't test you, boy, I'm special where she's lexing. Post the raps, that's what I tell you. Smoking zips, creating pressure. Diamonds, we clean for papers. Every beat I guess we take her. my gas, I wrote me major. I got them different flavors. In the good strikes, be my frame. It ain't no booth, they can't contain me. D and up and heating up. I'm gon' catch fire just like this blunt. As a young be smoking daily, now I'm older, smoking heavy. For my lungs, don't smoke no rage. In the 80s, baby, Vegas raised me. Mama loved me, daddy left me. Lost his life in LA, 80s. Let's put that switch and fill it up and twist and tuck in like that shit. I'm with strong, I'm in public. I can't got one night to live. Smoking rocks and purple punch. I'm coughing, choking, floating, bitch. Throwing it back. Star on the map, but ain't no star up on my hat. I'm trying to catch a vibe, so in my pocket, battle rack. 
no sense in looking back Your boy is on attack Ain't no syrup in this bag But I still double cup my yak With a Sprite over some ice Blowing strong with the light This trip which I'm a quick maker Wish I would change her life But boy she gon' be sick tonight I'm only changing flights Like how I'm supposed to be in Vegas But I'm in Dallas for the night On that 35 e Me and Paul getting right Still sipping on this pipe Playing songs, talking life They want all the details on how we earned up all these stripes We stuck to all the codes and we learned the facts of life So she like Oh boy, is you a rude boy? I can feel the money, do you talk that to a boy? Do you look like you always boy? Do it how you do it, let me see it to a boy Do it, do it Oh boy, you're such a rude boy Now watch out for Drowning in that river, eh? Hey. Yeah, drowning in that river, eh? Hey. Hey. Drowning in that river, eh? Hey. Hey. Drowning in that river Drowning in that river of whiskey I'm feeling so filthy My body feels so gone, so gone My wallet and my phone Rolling, smoking, potent Fumble in my keys I'm losing focus Driving super drunk Don't know where I'm going Yeah, it's been a mouth Then I'm round for the coast Drowning on my own oh, oh. Baby, me a soul oh, oh. I can't find my way home oh, oh. Drowning in the ocean Drowning on my own Yeah, yeah It's a long time since I've been On a night out with my friends it's been a long time, slash, where the hell are you been? Then Mark, Jim, and Jameson said, fuck it, let's get lit Then I took a Uber, then I hit the club, and I'm fucking off my bread They know it's my decision Yes, that. sir, that was Whiskey by my guy, oh, Eric yeah. Stax We oh, yeah. played Whiskey Do River. It Boy, and we played Diamonds and Gold by the homie J.O. Uh, okay. We got Hood Baby with D-Baby, I mean Hood Cry with D-Baby Um Man, it, it's so much going yeah, on. We got bro. one minute, but where they go? What can they find on music? Because I want to check it out too. Uh, I like literally, that song. Uh, Spotify, Title, iTunes, Music, Jo. Uh, if you go to my Instagram page, underscore Jo makes music. I got all the links and the highlights. You mm -hmm. can just click whichever source you want. What about you, my dude? What about you? What if I'm at? Yeah. I see J O N E Z <laughs> everywhere. You know what I'm What's saying? That? We talking about uh, Instagram, TikTok, Facebook, and YouTube. Oh. <laughs> um, and then I drop music every weekend. So check me out on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube for my new songs. Um, and then check out my store. Actually, the homie just shared it. I was it. just about to say that. Yeah. yeah. So follow me on E R I C. Well, E R I C underscore S T A C K Z. Go to my story right now. Got that swipe up link. Get some of that merch. You ain't got no merch. What you doing? What are you doing? <laughs> you feel me? I'm going to cost some of that too. Bro. Man, we appreciate y'all for tuning in. Glad to have yes, you, my brother, too. Please go follow our people and our special guests. Man, we appreciate you, bro. We out, Definitely, bro. man. Double up. You know what it All is. Day. Let's go.